Hey guys, Balkan Architect here, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to dimension things in Revit. So we're just going to be placing dimensions on different kinds of elements, and I'm going to share with you a bunch of tips and tricks that are going to make the whole process, the whole extremely annoying process of dimensioning things, quite easy. Okay, but before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot, and if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe, because I make videos like this every day. Okay, so let's get started. Now, first we need to understand how dimensions work, and at least in my country, you basically have three types of dimensions on each wall that are basically, all. you always have to place them on the outside of the building. So you need to have all of the openings, so that means all the windows and all the doors, you need to dimension them and their relationship to each other as well as the edges of the building. Then you have to dimension all of the edges of the building, the the whole complete, basically the whole complete size of the building, and then one more thing, you need to dimension all the grids. Now grids aren't really that important, the important part is what they symbolize, and they symbolize basically the place where the stress is carried out. So if I'm here in Revit, you can see grids are placed in the middle of the, the core of the wall, and the core is this over here, this concrete part. Let's make it a smaller scale to see it better. Okay, so this is the core. So the grid goes through the core because all, this, all the stresses are carried through this part of the wall. This is just cosmetics and insulation, nothing more. This is just the facade. The core is where all the, all the structural elements are, so we need to dimension that as well. Okay, so let's get started dimensioning this here thing that we have. Just a bunch of walls, basically. So for the dimension, I'm going to type in DI, and that's the shortcut, and here you get this place dimension dialog, and you have a bunch of the dimensions over here. So we're going to start with the aligned dimension. That basically aligns your dimension with the wall or any surface that you're dimensioning. And then here you get a bunch of options. So you get this wall center line, wall face, center of core, face of core. Now that's really important, and also we get here entire wall all or individual references. Now for this, we're basically dimensioning the whole wall, so I'm going to choose entire wall, and here, what do we need? First dimension, we need to go from the edge to all of the openings, so I'm just going to go here with wall faces, those are the edges. And then how to dimension all of the openings, you need to open up this options dialog, check the openings, and let's go with width, and just go OK. So just select this wall, this wall, click, and you're done. So it's as easy as that, and you get all of the all of the dimensions perfect on. Now, if I just type in the I again for dimension, now we also had this option here for centers. Now these centers you're usually not going to use them. The only case where you're going to use them is if you're using dimensions to kind of create something design something in architecture, and let me explain that. So I'm just going to select this center, and then choose this wall over here, and as you can see it now, basically selected the, the center of this door. So we don't really need that, nobody is using this dimension, but if we want to place this door exactly in the middle between this face over here and this face over here, we can do that by placing this dimension, hitting EQ, and now it's exactly in the middle. And here we get this EQ sign, and if you don't like it, if you want to keep it as a dimension for some reason, you can select the dimension, right click, and just uncheck this EQ display, and then you get the actual number, and then you can change it to just EQ if you want. Or, another thing that you can do, you can go into DI, and change this to width, but you want to keep that constraint, so you're just going to create another dimension, select this one, and maybe hide it in this view. Okay, so I'm just going to reset this and delete all of these. Oops. Unconstrain, that's okay. Okay, so let's continue on. So now we want to dimension just these wall edges. So I'm just going to go again, DI for dimension. Make sure you're here on wall faces, entire walls, and for option, just uncheck windows, 
or openings and place that dimension here above. Then the next thing we want, we want to just to have these grid lines or basically cores, center cores of these walls and to dimension that you just change this from wall face to, fa uh, to center of core and then you go again here and here you place and you're basically going just through the grids or through the center of this core. Okay, so once we have these dimensions placed, let's go and do some other dimensions. So let's talk about these here linear dimensions. That's basically a dimension that can only be at 90 degrees or basically vertical or horizontal, nothing else. So if I go here and select linear and then I have to kind of make sure I can select something and then you get these little dots so I can find basically maybe this dot here you can see it appears for a second yeah and you can hit tab to select it better so you just get that and then you can place dimensions like so so that's not particularly useful but I guess it can be useful sometimes okay so you've got that linear dimension now let's go DI again and here we have this angular dimension this gives you the angle and you can choose from core or wall face I usually use wall face in these cases just because it looks better than if it would go if I go here maybe center of core it's kinda ugly when the dimension is kinda going from the center line and as you can see it's the same number so it doesn't really matter so that's how you do all the angular dimensions there's really no nothing more to add to that okay so let's continue on so again di for dimension and we have this radial and diameter so it's basically the same thing you're just calculating the same either the radial or diameter of a some sort of a circle or an arc so let's choose wall face here and let's choose this interface interface inner face so you can select it and basically place a dimension like that next thing let's go DI and you get this arc length so what is this this is basically the length of an arc now you first select the arc and let's change this to wall faces yeah and let's go to the outside and then you select some elements on this arc so I'm just going to select these three windows and place a dimension like this so it, that basically calculates the distance between these two points so that maybe you can use to calculate the amount of paint or gypsum or whatever you're putting on the face of this facade so you get that okay let's go DI again now we got this spot elevation and EL is the shortcut for that so you can just type in EL and then you go here and you just place the dimension pull it out a bit and go like that do the same thing here and as you can see here on this staircase I'm just basically placing spot elevations for each of these stairs and here we got this is just a ramp and if I go into 3d you can see that's just a sloped ramp but it has some sort of a slope so if I go into level 1 and type in DI again you can see here we've got this slope elevation and I can select basically here where we have some slope let's just try that again so you kinda place it you place it where you want to and then you can kinda modify it yeah let's leave it there and you can place it here now if you don't know which units it's using you can go here into edit type and in type properties you can change the units now I'm using everything in metric but you can always work in imperial units the same way and here you can change the format maybe from percentage to decimal degrees go apply and now it flipped to five decimal degrees okay so we have that done now let's modify some of these dimensions so let's select one of these dimensions and go into edit type but before we do that here let's just talk about this leader here so if you if you don't like this dimension being here let's say you have a wall running through this 
and you want to move this out of the way, you can select the dimension and kind of move it away. But you get this ugly leader. Now, maybe you want it, maybe you don't. If you want it, just leave it. And if you don't want to have it, just uncheck this. And now this is kind of moved out of the way. So now let's select the dimension and go into edit type. So you get some here type properties. And you can go down and maybe maybe edit the text, maybe you don't like the Arial and you can either edit this one or you can just duplicate and create a new text but let's edit this one for now so let's change this to I don't know Sentry Gothic that's what I always use and then you can change it maybe you can make it bold so just check here bold yeah now eh, maybe not you can change the size of the text over here, you can change the text offset, that's the distance from the text to the line. So let's change this to one millimeter perhaps. Go apply and as you can see now this dropped down a bit. And you've got this text background and it's opaque. That means you have this white background. And if I change this to transparent and go apply, now it's gone. So you usually want to keep it. Unless you've got some some light hatch in the background and then it's unnecessary. Then you can change the color of the actual dimension if that's something you want to do. And you can also change these lines over here. So let me just zoom in over here like so and uncheck these thin lines. So you can see this thick here is a bit thicker. <laughs> no pun intended. So I'm just going to select this and go here and you can find this thick mark and you can change it from diagonal to maybe filled dot so you might want to have a dot or filled box or just maybe heavy end or open dot whatever that is yeah, that looks cool as well but let's leave it at diagonal this is the traditional architectural tick so you probably don't want to change that and you can actually change the line weight so maybe you can change this to I don't know line weight 2 go apply now everything's thicker but let's leave it at 1 I think that's quite okay and here again you can change the unit formats now I'm working in centimeters for this project so I'm left with centimeters here for this but you can actually uncheck here to use project settings and once you've unchecked that then you can actually change this to maybe meters or millimeters or if you're using imperial units I guess you can use some of those as well and remember that EQ sign well you can actually change the text so you can maybe type something different over here and let's just cancel out of this Okay, so those are some of the basics for dimensioning things in Revit. I hope you have learned something new. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please like and share this video and of course subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for future tutorials, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.